It's great to meet you. Thank you for taking nice a minute. Nice to meet you out. too, Joe. So let's talk before we get into your latest project. I want to cover what we lived through for the last three and a half years, which has been COVID. How did you survive it? And how has it changed you? Um, well, I think we're still in it too. So let's not say it's something that's over because I'm still hearing a lot of people getting it. And it's something that's a real concern, especially for me as a singer. And I'm on tour a lot and I'm traveling a lot. So I'm trying to be very careful. Um, so, you know, it's a reality kind of we're living with. Um, it was a really hard time for performers and for musicians. I mean, I think there's no substitute for live music. We all learned that. And um, uh, is everything okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, and, um, and yeah, there's no substitute for live music, you know? Right, yeah. So that's the thing I think we all learned. Like at first people were like, oh, let's do this online. Let's, um, let's you know, do online concerts, but it didn't really work. And I don't think anybody liked it. And I felt uh, the few ones that I did, I gave so much energy. And usually in a show, you give all that energy, but you get something back. Mm -hmm. and there's an exchange that happens and here it would feel like I gave so much energy and then it's gone and it's silent um and that was really difficult so um how did I get through it I don't know I made a lot of music I I I worked on this record a lot I worked on another record that will come out in um in a year a year and a half so um I just kind of like kept trucking forward and I'd say it was it was more spurts but it was like I just needed music to get through that period for sure I think a lot of people did so let's hone in on the latest project cape and I want to know how did this project come about and how good does it feel now with things opening up you know venues are opening up artists are releasing material what's this mean yeah, so you you know you were saying what is it what did I learn from that period and I think you just don't take anything for granted, you know? So it just it it feels like I can just go for exactly what I want. It's a lot clearer to me how important it is for me to perform, how important it is to share the music. Um this new release Cape Verdean Blues, we just did a 3-week tour in the US and I'm about to go to Europe and Africa on tour for 2 months. And um, there were a lot of moments where I was just standing on stage, like, I can't believe we're back. I can't believe this is happening again. It's, it's, I haven't done this extensive of a tour since 2019. And um, since right before COVID basically. And it, it feels great, you know, to get to do that again. And also I'm working with musicians from West Africa. So even to be able to, from Cape Verde, so to be able to be in the same room as them um, for the pandemic, I didn't even know when I was going to release the album because I didn't know when I could go there, when I could bring them here. Um, so just to be able to make this music and this album, we need to be in the same room in the same place. And that couldn't have happened in the last several years. So I'm grateful also for that. What are you hoping the listener gets from this album? Um, so this album was inspired by Cesaria Evera, who was a legend of world music um, from, from this small island nation, Cape Verde of West Africa. And she put Cape Verde on the map of the world. And she had a really authentic way of... Um, singing and of just being completely herself in the music and I think that's what touched a lot of people's hearts including mine so when I uh decided to conquer her music and work on this music um and I worked with many of her collaborators who who played with her live um oh sorry there's my alarm um she she brought me a lot of solace in her voice. And I, I hope that other people get that from this music. I hope that it brings people comfort and the peace in the way that this music has brought me comfort and peace. 
Well, and you are definitely doing that with your music. And I'm curious, what is what is the thing that you like the best about this process and journey of being a professional musician? Um, that's a really broad question and I don't know how to answer that. Um, I think probably just the interaction with people. So whether that's the interaction with other musicians or the interaction with um, the audience, there's something that Bao, my um, guitarist from Cape Verdean Blues is the master guitarist from Cape Verde. There's something that he said um, in an interview that really touched me. He said, music is the best way he knows of giving and receiving love. And I have to say that's the same for me. So what so you're 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 touring now. How, how do the crowds feel? What's the energy like? What is it? I know you talked about being grateful to be back there doing it, but what are you receiving from the crowds? Oh, just so much love, so much appreciation. Um, it's been just thrilling. It's been really positive, like lots of standing ovations and encores and people are happy people are happy to be hearing music people feel um uh joy i think to go out and hear live music and to have that live experience and uh and i think the same way i know what i want to do i think the same way people are not um quiet about how they feel so when they enjoy it they really let you know and that's really nice so as a practitioner of the stage, giving joy to people, how did that begin for you? What was the first live show you saw that made you think, wow, I want to do that someday? Um, I mean, I've been performing and singing since I was very little. So I probably don't remember, you know, the very first one. But I would say one pivotal one was when I was living in Brazil, I was 20 years old and I saw Cesaria Evera perform. Um, she, there was a black consciousness music festival in Salvador, the city I was living in a few blocks from my house, open air and just beautiful music, beautiful acts from around the diaspora. And Cesaria was there performing and I knew her music a little bit, but seeing her perform live, seeing, um, you know, she was not overly entertaining. She was not smiling. She was barefoot smoking and drinking whiskey and um there was just this very powerful authenticity about her she was not trying to please anybody she was just really herself and yet everybody was captivated whether it was her band or the audience like everyone was sort of laser focused on her and that um that really impacted me of like i I want to do that. You know, I want to do what she's doing or I want to understand what she's doing. And one of the beautiful things that you get to do is you get to travel the world and you get to go to all of these different places to perform your music. What's been one of the most surprising, beautiful places that you performed at that you just didn't expect that kind of blew you away? In terms of the place or the audience? I, it could be a Venn diagram that meshes together. It could be all of it together. Um. I, I had a wonderful festival in Nairobi, Kenya, um, a, a jazz a jazz festival, international jazz festival. And what really surprised me about it was that the audience was very young. So jazz audiences in the US and Europe tend to be much older, tend to be gray haired um, or my friends, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, but here the audience I would say was mostly in their twenties and a little bit in their thirties and um, there was just this great enthusiasm um, and there was a hunger for jazz so I feel like people were open and willing to absorb anything that we were going to do and I think seeing that future generations. Um, being excited about jazz was really exciting for me. I mean, we were like rock stars there. You know, we had a VIP car, we had billboards um, and the audience was dancing to our music and screaming and it was 3000 people. I mean, it was, it was so, there was so much enthusiasm and so much energy 
And I felt this is a really positive thing for the future of jazz music. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, fans, but you ultimately run the show. What is your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, I think that's way too complex to answer in a in a short interview. Okay. All right. So why do you love jazz? Um, jazz to me is is freedom. Um jazz to me is a place where there's no judgment and you're free to be who you are, to embrace who you are, to express who you are. That's what I found listening to jazz as a child. That's what I found playing jazz as an adult and and really especially the the process of improvisation it's taught me how to be in the moment and embrace the moment so there was a fear i think over the pandemic that students weren't going to enroll in college people were fleeing big cities but it seems as though it's stronger than ever what's your perception of how jazz and the community is doing now well i mean the music is very strong uh, the industry is very, it's very tough. It's still a very tough time. Um, it's, um, it's definitely in crisis, you know, in terms of the, the whole music industry, not just the jazz industry, because of the digital world and streaming. And, you know, it used to be that you could make your living from selling CDs. Then it used to be touring, which got very difficult during the pandemic. And, um, now, um, you know, it's 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 very much in flux. So I think we don't know where it's going to go. There's a bit of a Wild West atmosphere. Um, but the creativity is there. You know, the creativity mm -hmm. is there and people are pushing the boundaries and innovating. Um, and it's not just in New York. I think a lot of people left New York in the last 10 years um, to go to different places. So you have these pockets of jazz happening in some unsurprising places in the country or like I said in the world I think that's one very exciting thing about jazz today is you have people studying jazz and playing jazz all over the world and um, and I think that's going to really bring it forward so if anyone wants to pick up the latest album see you live anything about your world where's the best place to go Okay, best place is kavitashahmusic.com, K-A-V-I-T-A-S-H-A-H music.com. You can sign up for my mailing list. You can see the latest tour dates. Um, you can, you know, connect on social media. You can learn more about the music. Um, if people want to hear the album Cape Verdean Blues, they can find it on all platforms spotify apple music um if they want a physical copy of the cd or the vinyl they can get it on bandcamp um kavitasha.bandcamp.com and um and i'm also on instagram at kanta kavita kavita thank you so much for your time today best of luck with the tour oh my pleasure Thank you so much. You bet. Real quick. I, I love your I love your background, by the way. Oh, thank you. I, I'd love to say.